one one dash one, which is highlighted in red current right now. Therefore, we see that the coordination of the system is is observed by the ArcFlash program, and, and therefore we can determine the order at which the protected devices will operate by looking at each DCC uh, in the program. Of course, to run an ArcFlash calculation in ETAP, you do not have to even generate all the TCC curves. The program automatically access the library and the current settings for each protected device, and it will determine the fault clearing time from all those uh, devices. Therefore, it actually eliminates some of the work of having to generate all the TCCs for each part of the system. Of course, in order to, to validate your results, you may want to generate a time current characteristic curve in order to check uh, the result and to see if there is any uh, way of limiting or reducing the amount of incident energy that could be released in the, of, in, the, in the event of an arc fall at each location. The next ex example that I would like to show you is for uh, multiple operating uh, conditions. If you move on to our first example number two, as shown on, on my screen right now, we'll see that we have a different type of system that has that is no longer radial, it has uh, some uh, utility power, and also it has some emergency diesel generator, ge emergency diesel generator that can be operated during particular times in the system. Under normal operation, uh, this system will be powered by the by the commercial power utility, and it will and it will actually uh, allow you to perform certain analysis on on this system. At this point, if we if we switch to our uh, our flash calculation, we can perform the analysis for this particular configuration and observe the results. For this particular case, under normal operation, uh, you, the program has determined that you have a category one with 2.41 calories per centimeter square. Of course, uh, we have to determine other operating conditions, uh, which would be the case where you're actually operating the system from the emergency diesel generator uh, operating on its own. So therefore, in ETAP, you can just switch to configuration automatically to, to study a different scenario, where now the, the system is powered by the emer emergency diesel generator. At this point, if we rerun the ArcFlash calculation, we can see that the program has determined a similar value for the, for the category, still a category one on the main switch here, here at 2.65 calories per centimeter square. There's one last uh, operating mode that we need to analyze in order to see what could be the potentially uh, worst case scenario. If we switch now this uh, system to operate in parallel, basically you could operate the system in parallel for different schemes. One, one could be for peak low shaving Therefore, we, we will have to analyze also the possible amount of incident energy that would be released under this particular situation. For this particular case, we see that, indeed, as we would expect, the highest amount of incident energy would be released in the, in the event of, a, of an arc fault when you have uh, both the operation of the emergency diesel generator in parallel with the commercial utility power. Of course, in ETAP, uh, you could set up unlimited number of configurations and study cases to, to study many, many operating conditions in your system. And it's very important that you actually consider all the different operating conditions in order to determine the, the worst possible incident energy. In this case, now we have a category three with about 9.38 calories per centimeter square. This is most likely caused by the contribution of the utility and the generator at the same time and we have an increase in the amount of arcing current. While we, we still maintain the uh, constant uh, fault clearing time response from, from the low voltage circuit breakers in this system. Of particular importance in this system also is to understand how the program will also determine the grounding of the system. In this case, if you double click on bus 11, which is the main uh, uh, bus for this uh, system, and we go to the ArcFlash page, we'll be able to, to see that for this particular case, the program has determined the system to be grounded. And therefore, it makes that determination from the fact that transformer three is set to a Y solid connection. <clears throat> In the case where you're operating off uh, only from the generator, 
if you run this if you rerun the study at this point you will be able to see that the program has actually automatically determined now this to be an ungrounded system and therefore uh, that would also increase the amount of incident energy released in the system so there, therefore different operating conditions may involve different grounding configurations and therefore, it will, it will actually uh, change the amount of incident energy that will be released in your system. At this point, I would like to present you one last system that would illustrate some, other, some of the other features of the program as far as being able to warn you about possible hazardous situations with the response of protective devices. In this case, I have a, a small system uh, with a 480 volt system uh, and I'm going to perform an arc calculation on this system and I will be able to see that the program comes up with some messages that we have not seen before one of them is uh, indicates that the program automatically determined or applied the arc in current variation at 85 percent of the original arc in current value we can see that the amount of incident energy released is, is very high and most likely this is caused by the <coughs> long res uh, the long fault clearing time response of the upstream protective device in this, syst in this uh, system. For a fault on, on LB bus 2, the protective device that would trip the fault will be LBCV3. If we plot this protective device uh, to check why the program calculates such a high amount of incident energy. You would just click on this device and will switch over to your coordination mode and generate a TCC. And at this point, you can see that the program has uh, determined that <coughs> the, the, the low voltage circuit breaker will trip at a, at a very high time, approximately 37 seconds. And it actually has fallen off the instantaneous setting of this device. We can observe on the, on, the, on the screen right now the difference between the instantaneous setting time, which will be uh, 0.05 to 0.1 seconds response, versus the, uh, <clears throat> the longer, the much longer time on this uh, long time uh, setting of this uh, low voltage uh, circuit breaker. Therefore, the program automatically determined that uh, you could have potentially a, a very high clearing time, and it has flagged that automatically. Of course, if we rerun the analysis without considering the, the arc in current variation by setting it to zero, we can rerun this study and observe that without the arc in current variation, the response uh, of LBCV3 is actually much faster and you only have a category one fault level. If we were to check the actual, compare this, the response of the protected devices uh, from arc flash to an actual short circuit, you can switch to, to your coordination mode and actually place a sequence of operation simulation mode, which in essence is, uh, is performing a simulation of the protected device response under a regular short circuit calculation. So if you were to place a fault on this equipment, you'll be able to see that the program automatically determines the, the order at which protected devices would operate. In this case, LBCV3 will be the one that would trip first, and then it will be followed by LBCV1. We can also check how fast LBCV3 will respond in the event of a regular short circuit on LB bus 2. If you go to our sequence viewer we can we can we can determine how long it took for lbcv3 to operate if you look at this particular uh, line on the sequence viewer it tells you that 